Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this performance of Becky's new car. Please take a moment to turn off your cell phones. Remember that taking pictures or recordings is prohibited by copyright laws and disrupts the actors and your audience neighbors. Also, please take a moment to identify the exits which are located in front of you to your left and also out the door where you came in. Thank you and enjoy the show. Ever been 
been as happy in your garden as you have a good day in your car, all alone, radio on, traffic moving nice and easy, heaven.
Yeah. Got the midterms coming up, full load, pressure's on big time. Right, yeah. But hey, I'm here now, so lay it on me. Lay it on you? You needed something. Yes, um, I need you to go down to Angelo's to pick up the pizza, okay? Um, money's in my purse, dad's on his way home, I like a salad. Alrighty. I told you I was ordering pizza tonight. Oh, well, yeah, but on my way home, I was walking by Angelo's. I didn't smell good. You mean you already ate there? I was hungry. I was awake. But, but I got something special tonight. I, I had a coupon. I ordered the... The double, double ham and artichoke supreme. How did you know that? I saw the guy write it down. You were, <laughs> you were there when I called? Oh, he, he was ringing me up. I saw him write your name down. And you couldn't wait 20 minutes and just... Not 20 minutes. Uh, more like 37 to 40 minutes because it's deep dish. Okay, but I mean, you couldn't call me and say, oh, Gee, Mom, I'm right here at Angelo's. I'm awake. Read the paper. Flirt with some spoiled coeds. And bring our dinner home with you? I need to study. What are you doing with your life? Huh? <laughs> You're a 26-year-old man. I thought this was about pizza. And you're still shacked up with your parents. <laughs> Please not. And, and we love you to death, but I mean, when does a psychology major get around to all that stuff about, you know, self-awareness and the, the unexamined life? That's Socrates. Okay, well, thank you, yes. And that's philosophy, not psychology. Okay, but when does a person look in the mirror, Chris? <laughs> Do you mean... When will I self-actualize? Yes, uh, maybe that's what I mean. Most experts believe only a few people in history have ever self-actualized, like Plato, Gandhi, Einstein, maybe Bono. <laughs> okay, okay, but at what point do you stop and realize that all of your friends have grown up and moved on and here well, you are? Well, that's perpetual constant. The ability to recognize that an object or organism has not changed. Yes, yes, yes. Even though their surrounding stimuli, their physical characteristics, for example, have changed. Okay, yes. And once a person recognizes this, um, this, this failure to change, I, I don't think failure is accurate. <laughs> at that point, don't they? Don't you think to yourself, "Gosh, maybe I should get out there and do something with my life"? Have you been reading Erickson? His style of work, Childhood and Society. Who? Well, because the term you're describing is generativity. Uh, the age to which Erickson gives, so when a person has the, the impulse to become more productive, to do something worthwhile with their life. <coughs> yes, yes, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Yes, and in most cases, this happens around middle adulthood. Right around your age, Mom. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> so, now we've got our terms identified. But let's begin with general inquiry. For example, Mom, what are you doing with your life? Me? Pizza! No. Right then, I thought about Mrs. Tipton. Mrs. Tipton was awaiting delivery on her new car. Our top of the line sedan. Black, fully customized, fully loaded. My co-worker, Steve, had been her salesperson. Have you seen her yet? Ha has she come in? Seen who, Steve? I had two sitting right across from me. I had just closed the sale and I was going over some of the extras and customized packages. She wants everything, Becky. That woman wants it all. So I slip one of the brochures across the desk to her. Are you listening to me? Right here. I looked down at her hands. Oh, those amazing hands for a woman her age. And the 50 side of 40. Just the priceless hands. And the thing is, her nails have this black polish on them. This incredible black, this ebony hue from the end of the known world. With a luster like the 56 Thunderbirds once had. Oh, the blackest of blacks, positively mesmeric. As I glance down at the jet black, inky splendor of her nail polish, I swear to you, I could see my old face in her fingers. <laughs> Ten little Steve's looking back at me. <laughs> and Mrs. Tipton said, all there is, Steve. Is there nothing more to be done? Ooh, and the tone of her voice just broke me in half. I watched the ten little Steves just not a little. You wait, Becky, you'll see. She's got this beautiful pain. 
Heaven and I have paid too this past year since Rita died. But not like Mrs. Tefton. A man could fall into that pain, never find his way out. Thanks, Steve. I'll do it. <laughs> I'll need a little sick, okay? There we go. So, ever since Mrs. Tipton arrived on the scene, what? I will get this tool, I promise. You'll see. Thank you for calling Bill Buckley, Lexa Satter, Nissan, Mitsubishi, home of the Hey, Beck, it's me. Oh, Joe. I, oh, gosh, I'm sorry. I, we got swamped. Yeah, I figured. Did you see the news? And, and, you know, I still have these quarterly reports to get out, so you and Chris should probably just go ahead and eat. Yeah, you did. Chris brought home a pizza. You're having pizza again? Don't worry, we made a salad. Carrot sticks are not a salad. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was just wondering if you saw the news. Big story on CNN. What is it? The internal combustion engine has been outlawed. All auto sales ended at 6 p.m. today. <laughs> <laughs> Car dealerships nationwide have been shut down. Workers were sent home. Very funny. And since it's now 20 minutes after 9 and you're still not home. Oh, please. Are you the only one there? Well, Francine is here. Francine is the janitor. She's supposed to be there. No, I'm sorry. I mean, really, it's just a job, Beck. It's just cars. Hold on. This phenomenon is known as normative social influence. The desire to gain approval through situational behavior, despite not believing in the value of what one is doing. Beck? You there? I'm sorry. You know, it just seems like the more I do, the further behind I get. Does that ever happen to you? Oh, wait, wait, I have no idea. You know, I need to have these collated and stapled. I wonder, could you guys help me out? Sure. Okay, great. Now just take this top page here, okay, and then the staple it to the other one. And this nice gentleman next to you can help you. Okay? Oh, great. Okay, good. Okay. Quick, before we interrupt you again. So, Mrs. Tipton bought her car from Steve, but the model she selected, um, you know, fully customized, loaded with extras, could not be delivered for another three or four weeks. When I told her this, she said, What's it matter, Becky? I've waited this long. Then she told me her story. Her husband, wealthy, well-known, and, like her, well into middle age. One day, Mrs. Tipton stepped out of the shower. Her husband looked her up and down, handed her a towel, and said, time is cruel, honey. And he left her for a swimwear model. <laughs> they had no kids, no family to speak of. Mrs. Tipton was alone. She sat down in the middle of her white carpeted living room floor for the next 17 days. And she stood up, put on her shoes, went to the grocery store, signed her house over to the checkout girl, and walked away from her life. She cleaned out all of her accounts, kept just enough cash for one really good manicure, and this fully loaded black car. I asked what she planned to do now. Drive away, she said. Uh, well, to where, I asked. She said nothing. I handed her my card, told her that I'd call her the minute the car came in. She looked at me with that beautiful pain. Is that all there is, Becky? Is that it? Good evening. Oh, we're closed. Uh, yes, I know, but I wondered if... Uh, no, you'll have to drop by tomorrow. Yes, you see, but this is kind of emergency. So, see, the dealership closed like three hours ago. I won't take much of your time. I could write you a check, give you a credit card, have my account Why you the full amount. What do you prefer? The, the full amount for what? I need to buy some cars. As gifts for my employees. We have a company breakfast bar at 7 a.m. I'm a pretty good year. I like to get them all a little something. But I'm just so terrible at gifts. My wife, Sheila, she was so good at it. She had a knack. She, she knew the perfect thing to get from people, no matter what the occasion. And so she's passed with a total wreck. I told her I should hire a gift consultant, or maybe put a swag master on the payroll. But really, I wouldn't know where to begin. Yeah, well, you know, now is not really a good time. I had 
have my driver take me to some stores. I had no idea there were so many stores out there. They're everywhere. <laughs> so I walked around these stores and uh, nothing. Not a clue of what to get. So I told my driver to take me home, and right away we were stuck in traffic. But I looked at the window and I said to myself, cars. People like cars. I'll get them all cars. So if you don't mind, I know it's late, but uh, I'd like to buy some of your cars. Uh, uh, how many cars do you need? No, just nine. Nine cars? I, I could arrange payment for them tonight. And could you put the keys in little gift boxes? She always kept a shelf of these neat little gift boxes with the ribbon fitted around, just so perfect. Anyway, I thought I'll hand out these boxes at our company breakfast, shake their hand, and uh, be done with it. Well, I, what, what kind of cars would you like? I don't know. Whatever you think. Nine of them. Oh, okay. Uh, well, here. Um, have, have a seat. Um, maybe you should look at this, okay? Now, these are all of our, our current models. See, this is where it gets tricky. Mm. <laughs> I don't know, maybe one of each style. Uh, and, and, and what colors? <laughs> See what I mean? This is impossible. God, I miss Sheila. Uh, you know, in, in the back here, we have these color fabrics and swatches, uh, interiors, exteriors. No, no, no. I can't do this. My driver's waiting for me. I'm supposed to be at a birthday party for my daughter, and I haven't gotten a gift for her either. Unless you count my entire estate, which will inherit the moment I drop dead, who's trying to buy gifts for all these people. <laughs> so, please, I, I know how I must sound and how foolish I must look, but can you help me? I recommend our all-wheel drive sport coupe. Very popular. My husband, he always wanted one of these. Oh, did he? And, you know, the thing is, you wouldn't have to pick out the colors or the interiors now. Well, the new owners could do that when they come in. And I recommend you get the same car for each one of your employees. You know, to avoid the appearance of, like, you know, favoritism. That's very smart. They can take delivery almost right away. And if you choose the top flight package, they can add any extras that they might want. Huh. Good. Let's do that. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, here we go. All right. So, nine cars, okay, plus title and taxes and fees comes to this amount right here. I see you still wear your ring. I have. I do too. I thought about leaving it with Sheila, having it buried. <laughs> it was my daughter who told me I should hold on to it. That serve as a nice reminder. I think you've done the same. Pardon me? You kept your wedding. Well, yes. I mean, I. I it's lovely. Thank you. I, I mean, I, I wear it because well. I now tell me, was he a good man? Was he kind to you? <laughs> he was. I mean, I mean, he is. He, he still is. Oh, I know the feeling. No, 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 he's still with me. We're, we're still together. Exactly. Then I thought I was too. No, I don't. It's like she's still with me, by my side, guiding me through my days. But, but my husband is and still... And leading me here tonight, leading me to you. Mm -hmm. I'm Walter. And you are? Um... <laughs> Rebecca. I'm sorry for your loss, Rebecca. <laughs> I understand. I like that name. Rebecca. The substance. Ballast. I hope you don't let people call you Becky. <laughs> Becky is the name of a dull housewife in a sad movie about a poor family struggling to hold on to their vanishing hopes and dreams. <laughs> in movies, Becky always gets the shot. Walter, I really need to tell you about my husband. And I need to tell you more about Sheila. I, I think it's healthy to do that kind of sharing. <laughs> well, let's not do it here. Let me pay for these cars and maybe we can go somewhere. Get a bite to eat. But you have a party to go to your daughter's birthday? Of course you would remember that. <laughs> of course. You place family above everything else. Sheila was like that too. <laughs> You're right. I should go. I still don't have a gift for my daughter. 
Does she need a car? No. Nah, plenty of cars. <laughs> Maybe I'll get a loft downtown. Kids love lofts, don't they? <laughs> I bet they do. <laughs> <laughs> Here is my card with my accountant's name on the back. Walter Flood. I've seen that name before. Maybe on billboards? Oh, do you advertise there? I am the billboard guy. I own the billboards. Which ones? Pretty much all of them. Go ahead. Say it. Uh, they're an eyesore. Visual pollution. I know. I have and all that is true. Believe me, if I could have made hundreds of millions of dollars and something good and great for the world, I would have done it. But my father handed me the business and said, Volta, don't screw it up. <laughs> the hand you, you, you must have played it well. Ah, who knows? Life is chaos and holidays, chaos and holidays. Who could say why things turn out the way they do? All I know is my life has become historical. A handful of people I met by chance and the things we did together. We, um, we have these little uh, gift keys. Uh, they don't really correspond to any particular car, but uh, they look real and people like to use them when they give a car as a gift? I'll need nine of them, please. And some little gift boxes? Hmm. Perfect. Uh, may I keep your card, Rebecca? Sure. And uh, may I call you? And the sound out of my mouth was sort of a cross between hmm and <laughs> Expect payment from your accountant. Thank you. 
So I think that's it. Mr. Flood, are you still there? Things narrow, don't they? As we age, the things in our life, our life itself, whether we care to admit it or not, begins to narrow and the unexpected fades away. Uh, you surprise me, Rebecca. And even if we never speak again, I I'm in your debt for that. You are the thing in my life that I, I thought would never come again, that unexpected thing. <laughs> I'll say goodnight now. Once again, I'm sorry. And the words out of my mouth should have been goodbye. Then something happened. Yes? Pardon me? Uh, you said wait. No, I didn't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was about to hang up. Yes, I did. I said wait. <laughs> and you said? No, I would have said wait. I would have said, you know, something else, some other word. I would have said. Such as? Such as, uh, thank you uh, for calling. And, and for what you said, I am very flattered. I'm very touched. And Everything okay? Oh. Oh. <laughs> Is that Buckley? No, right. At this hour? Unbelievable. <laughs> Beautiful. Don't do that. <laughs> Does he have any idea how lucky he is to have found someone like you? Yes, yes. You, you tell him that or I will. I will. I will tell him that. Yes. Go back to me. Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> Good morning out there. <laughs> Chris, like Dad always says, yeah, I finally know what he means. Catch you later. Chris, wait, 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 wait. What's going on? What do you mean? It's 5.30 a.m. And it's crisp out there. <coughs> Ron, you barely walk. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's this girl I've seen. She's a runner. Really into it. Five days a week. Well, except she can't right now. She's oh. on crutches. Yeah, she's ligament damage. Well, then how is she able Well, to so for now, I'm running, and she's driving her car alongside me. We've got this really good talk. Wait, 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 wait. Let's just back up a bit, huh? Now, you're uh, exercising, and you're having really good talks with a girl. How long was I asleep? <laughs> <coughs> Look at this. You all got up to see me off to work. Yeah. <laughs> That's so nice. Um, Chris was just telling me of this girl he's been seeing. I always like Candace. <laughs> what happened to her? Not again. <laughs> Your mom liked Candace. She was a nice girl. Candace had no later life. She was all lipstick and spandex and exclamation points. Okay. I don't need that, Dad. Sorry I ever brought it up. I'm not looking for a purely cosmetic connection here. I don't pro require a partner who provides mere auditory and visual stimuli. You're a drag for that. Exactly. <laughs> I am looking for, I would hazard to say that all of us are looking to, to put our, our fundamental nature forward in the hopes
hopes of, of tapping the wellspring of another human soul. So you don't care what she looks like? Look, Dad, obviously the process of finding your soulmate can be greatly accelerated if she also happens to be really hot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good to know. <laughs> That's her. I gotta run. <laughs> I'm gonna find out today. We're going on a huge run. Gotta fly. Peace. Peace. Becky. I'm coming. I'm coming. Hey. I've got those big voices. Becky. Come, 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 Are you just getting here? No, no, of course not. No, I, I, no, I was. Did you I sleep slept. here? I, I did you not. Look, you no. look like you slept here. I did not sleep here. I slept here. Yes, I, I know. Couldn't bear it at home. Couldn't bring myself to look at her stuff. Her hiking boots, her socks, her funny winter cap. It was hard, I know. And then I went upstairs. There was her little hallway. The paint, the pictures on the wall. Her bedroom door. Yes, I know. You told me. The doorknob. The bed. <laughs> The sheets, the pillowcases, a little Mr. Dibble! should be over it by now. No, no, that's not... We gave him X number of months to mourn good old Rita. We took him out for beers and listened to him tell the story of her fall for the 200th time. 300. That is not funny. <laughs> you don't know, Becky. You and Joe, you're set. You're locked in. You'll have each other forever. Some of the rest of us. I, I know, I'm sorry. I, I really want to get past this stuff. I really do. I'm sick of talking about it, and you must be really sick of hearing it. It's like yesterday. <laughs> and this mom and her small boy were in line behind me. And they had this puppy. And I heard the mom say to her son, why don't you show the puppy to that nice man who's so sad over there? Maybe the puppy will cheer him up. I am really trying to ignore this, but by now the puppy is sniffing at my shoes, and, and, and the little kid is saying, Hi, mister, you look sad. Do you want to have my puppy? What I thought, even though I didn't say it, what I thought was, and I do, sunny boy. <laughs> I want to pet your little puppy, and then I want to take him for a nice walk, a little hike up in the mountains with you right by his side. And then, when we get to the rugged vista, which is our destination, I want to let go of his leash for just a second, just an instant, right with the path beneath his little paws begins to give way. And I want you to watch your puppy's desperate eyes as he tries to grab his head around. But his little paws, there's nothing at all, nothing but hair, nothing but you and your scream. And you might as well scream your heart out, sonny boy, because there's nothing you can do for that puppy of yours who's wrong. Down, 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 into a dark abyss that will never, never give him back. Kid cried till he threw 
drive to, to Cedar Cove. You don't drive to Cedar Cove, thank you. You achieve Cedar Cove, <laughs> marry into it. It looks like it's about an hour to the ferry. Depending on traffic, then another 40 or 50 minutes on the water. Once you dock, another hour's drive to the far side of the island. People commute from there? People have seaplanes. What's in Cedar Cove? Oh, I have no, nothing. Just, just something for a client. What client? One of my clients? Uh, no, no, we need to Maybe I do. Give me a hand. So, plans for the weekend? Oh, you bet. Uh, here's a flyer. You and Joe free on Sunday? We might. I might have plans. I'm, I'm, doing, a, I'm doing a fundraiser for the Wilderness Co-op. We'll, we'll have organic juices and trail-friendly gore. <laughs> Slideshow. And, of course, the slideshow of my heights with Rita. <laughs> this one has a couple of new photos, never before seen, which really makes it worthwhile watching the whole thing over from the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great, yeah. Oh, that's me. <laughs> I, I gotta get this. Thanks for talking to Donnie Mountain again, Becky. Yeah, see you Sunday. <laughs> oh, they need these last five. Oh, are you, are you kidding me? I mean, and... Uh, can I go home? Thanks. <coughs> I used to love a quiet house. Nothing but the sound of my own thoughts. It was times like this when I was most grateful for my life. I, I'd sit and remember what a, a cute little boy Chris was, you know, before he entered this phase called manhood. I'd think about Joe and his great big Soviet-style heart, <laughs> solid and strong and much bigger than it needs to be. 28 years of marriage. And counting. When my house was quiet, I could see my life for what it really was content and complete. Hey, listen, I want to thank you all for being here. Um, now, since we don't really know each other, um, we should be able to be completely honest with one another, don't you think? Huh? Yeah. So, as you know, um, I've been invited to a dinner party at Walter Flood's house on Sunday, which, which is tonight. So, how many people think I would be a complete, total fool to go to that party? Raise your hand. <laughs> okay, well, maybe I'm looking for, like, you know, just a, a different kind of honesty. Um, <laughs> how many of you think that, you know, gosh, Becky, it's just a party. Go, have a good time. Okay, all right. Could you give me a hand? Oh, here for just a moment. There you go. Watch, watch your step. Be careful now. Come up here. There you go. All right. Okay. We got work to do. Can we have a little music, please? <laughs>
such a good idea, yeah. You know what they say, never arrive at a party with someone who's prettier than you are. <laughs> Alive, 
and I am not the sort of person that goes sneaking around behind his back. But of course, I am that person. <laughs> Apparently I'm exactly that person that sneaking around trying to catch the 520 ferry person. <laughs> Still, I, I should call him, I, you know, tell him I might be late or lost or insane or... <laughs> uh, can somebody tell me why my lipstick is the first thing I find when I reach into my purse? <laughs> Unless, of course, what I'm trying to find in my purse is my lipstick, in which case it's nowhere to be found. <laughs> like my phone. I can find your phone. You know it's in here. <clears throat> Joe handed you your coat, you grabbed your purse, your keys, and then you left your phone at home. You forgot your phone. Hmm? After all that, you forgot your phone. I forgot my phone. Who's this? <coughs> oh. I'm sorry. Rebecca? You're trying to reach Becky? It's Walter. Walter? Yes. Are you the new guy? Uh, well, uh... <laughs> <laughs>
Walter. Ginger. Lovely. Yes. Your daughter thinks I'm swooping in. A pardon? On you. She thinks I have some plan to swoop in. Oh, you know, Kenny, always so protective. Well, yes, of course she is, Walter. She loves you. But personally, I don't feel very swooped in. No. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I don't see your boat. I don't see either of your boats. No, the boats are gone. The artwork is gone. The horses. Even the horses? No way to keep them. Or the place at the lake. Or the season tickets. You gave up the season tickets? Along with three cars and uh, most of my jewelry. I had no idea. Well, it finally caught up with us. The Timber Baron's kids. We all assumed that the money none of us made would never run out. <laughs> <laughs> then the investments went bad. The trust funds got empty. The bills came due. I'm so sorry. Oh no, please. The last thing we deserve is sympathy. The fact is, after a hundred years of being Pampered and deferred to. None of us know how to do a fucking thing. <laughs> I mean, we never worked. We never had jobs. We have no tangible skills. Oh, sure, we know how to stay busy. We're all the time telling each other how busy we are. But if we had to walk out the door tomorrow and do something practical, something useful, something other than dressing up, attending a function, and eating with the proper fork. We wouldn't have a clue. Ginger. If our great-grandpa, the timber bearer, came back and, and saw what soft little spoiled ninnies we've become, he'd kick our asses to hell and back. <laughs> and here I am, the woman who kept putting off getting married putting it off until the last minute and beyond. And I could do that, you see, because I always had this safety net. I had my money. And I knew that even after my looks were long gone, I'd still have my inheritance. And maybe there'd be someone who'd want that. Some man who'd want my money, even if he didn't really want me. I found the chef. Dinner's being served. Oh, wonderful. I'm starved. I had no idea about Ginger, what she's going through. Mom would say... Oh, I don't care what your mother would say. Not tonight. So, how's the loft? It's nice. Do you paint it there? Paint? <clears throat> Isn't that what people do in lofts? Yeah. That's what they do in the movies, paint and play the saxophone. Do you need a saxophone? Yeah. How about a treadmill? I know how you and Ramsey love to go running. Yes. <laughs> is he in town? No, the trust fund playboy Ramsey McCord is back east, trolling for debutantes. You talk that way, but everybody assumes you're going to marry him anyway. Including you? No. I hope you surprise me. I've come to believe in surprises. Rebecca, this is Kensington Hermione Flood, my daughter. Kenny, I'm so sorry. I well, that's quite a name. Yes, my mother was a terrible Anglophile. Yes, I, I've heard quite a lot about your mother. Yes, but you won't hear another word about her tonight. Now, may I get you a pocket drink? No, oh, I'm fine. Uh, I'll get you a tumbler and some ice. No, no, this is, this is all I need, really. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kenny lives downtown. She has a, a new law. Oh, that's right. Happy birthday. Thanks. Well, my directions wrong? No, 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 they, they were fine. It's just that I, no sooner had I, I driven off the ferry when I, I ran into a breakdown. R right in the middle of the road. It was, it was pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I didn't have my cell phone. Yes, I know. I was already running late, but somehow I managed to get, you know, how did you know? Uh, I spoke to Joe. 
say, the right note in the mail, the right hand towels for all the right occasions. It was too much, Walter. And after a while, nobody was buying it. Now listen to me. That woman was about as deep as a cookie sheet. In fact, we started calling her that behind her back. <laughs> cookie sheet. Sweet and shallow and completely non-stick. So we're bringing the cars around. Be careful with this one, Walter. She's the real deal. Kenny, are you staying over? Uh, no, I have my morning run. And the cottages, are they free? Yes, I believe cottage four is available. Why? Um, it was very nice to meet you. Oh, thank you. Safe travels. Thanks. Lovely. Yes. Uh, this place, uh, how long have you had it? Oh, it's been in the family for years. Oh, and who did you buy it from? You mean the original uh, owners? Yes. The original owners were a sovereign Indian nation. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Rebecca, I, I was wondering if... I couldn't possibly stay. If that's what you're thinking, well, that's what you're going to ask me. Is that what you were thinking and we're going to ask me? Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you know, according to the schedule, if I leave right now, I, I can still make it to the last ferry. But you'll miss the sunrise of the water tomorrow. It's like the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. It's like the first morning of the world. Tempted. But you're going to leave. Yes. Let me propose something. Come next week. Take one of the cottages. See as much or as little of me as you want. Just spend some time here. Oh, that's that's impossible. <coughs> you can't get away from work? Well, no, I, I I can't actually, but Walter. Walter, that breakdown that happened on the road tonight had nothing to do with cars. It was my own personal breakdown. I, I had a, a head-on emotional crash, pounding my fists on the dashboard, crying my eyes out and yelling, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> I do that all the time. <laughs> I did not tell my co-workers. And also, 
and not tell Joe. Well, it has to be your call. Like when I did that roofing job down south. Joe. It's a long drive, but if the money's good. Well, what would you do? I mean, with, with me on the road that much. Well, I don't want you on the road that much. Six hours a day in your car? That makes no sense. Exactly. I mean, so why are we talking So if talking you really about? want to take this job, we should think about making a move down there. We can't move down there. Why not? People have rooms down there. But, I mean, all your contacts your, are here, your clients, your crew. And, I, I'm just saying that... And, and what do we tell Chris? You tell him he won. We're moving out before he is. <laughs> Oh, God. 
Huh? He's a married man, Becky. Uh -huh. Okay, I'll keep your little secret. You know, I don't know how you can do a thing like this to Joe. But the point is, the new Steve is not going to back down from the Buckleys of the world anymore. Oh, God. If he doesn't want his wife to find out about this affair, it's going to cost him. Oh, my God. Hey, he's here. He's walking through the door. Steve, don't. Mr. Buckley, do you have a minute? Steve, Steve, don't do it, please. I'm going to kick it, Becky. Steve, don't talk to Buckley until I get there, please. I'm going to kick this dysphoria once and for all. This what? I, wait, Steve. Jeez. I need to change. No, I, I mean completely. I mean everything. Steve, Chris, Chris, can you get that door, please?
Say hello to the new assistant regional sales director. Steve, you promised, you swore you weren't going to talk to Buckley. Turns out I was right. Buckley was having an affair. Some hot little pharmacist who works nights as a stripper. I got my promotion and the Wilderness Co-op got a huge donation. It's mm, amazing. Blackmail is fun. And I'm sorry, Becky. I, I know what I was thinking. You could never pull off an affair. You don't have it in yet. Now come on, let's celebrate. Steve, I, I just need to talk to you. I got some vegan cupcakes in the car. Oh, come here soon, Mom. I promise. Well, uh, does she have a name, Chris? Can you tell me that much at least, huh? Mom? I'm trying to find my lipstick. Well, and I'm trying to talk to you. There's a new vibe going around the house, and I thought we should rap about it. <laughs> rap about it? There are certain emerging factors which begin to pose a very definitive question. Like, like what? Mom, do you think Dad's cheating on you? No. Little things. He won't say where he's going at night. It doesn't answer his phone. I mean, surely you've noticed. Um. Well, how are things in the romantic quadrant? The what? Is everything okay there? Nothing that can't be fixed. Uh, thanks for coming all the way out here. No problem. Now, I'll have to say goodnight. We're having guests for dinner. Great old house. Huh. Uh, here's the uh, estimate for the room. Any questions, just give a call. Okay, thanks. Dad's looking for you. Okay. <laughs> Rebecca, yes? <laughs> you look right at home. <sighs> Walt tells me that's your house. Oh, it was. It belongs to the bank now. Well, where are you staying? At the Holiday Inn, uh, near the ferry terminal. You're living there? And working weekends as a hostess. The money's no good. Oh, but they're training me. taught me this, Rebecca, that a woman can turn the page. So thank you. Hello, ladies. Our guests have arrived. Oh, good. Can you let me guess who's here? Who? Bill Buckley. He's been using my billboards for years. Oh. oh. And if it wasn't for his cars, I would have never met you. Isn't that sweet? Um, his wife couldn't make it, so he brought his niece. Her name's Amber. And she's a pharmacist. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Angelo's is not bad. And they bring it to 
Ikea house. I, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> they don't do that where you live? Not unless I send a cop there. <laughs> I, now, could I do some roofing with a helicopter? I'm told I, I need some roofing. At my house on the roof. <laughs> Who told you that? But Kenny had a man out. So you've got a leak somewhere. Like that one? <laughs> <laughs> yes. And you put a bucket under it. What a good idea. <laughs> what did you do? I'd rather not say. <laughs> Must be hard work, you think, keeping people dry. It pays the bills. And I have to stay in people's houses. I, I would like that. Not that heat. Not the weather. Not the noise and all those tools. But not the work part of it. <laughs> I complain. I'm pretty sure I would complain. You probably don't complain. I learned something a long time ago, Walter. No one, and I mean no one on earth, wants to hear how busy you are, how tired you are, or what happened to you at the airport. Joe? I don't think so. That's wonderful. <laughs> As I was driving here, I thought that maybe you were... Lay a trap? Yes. An ambush? Uh, something like that. Are you? Did you think I just let it go? What I thought was, I thought you were dead. I'm not dead. <laughs> that much is clear. <laughs> but Becky kept insisting you were, so I wasn't fearing a, a live guy was going to kill me. I was fearing a dead guy who was like, you know, haunt me for a while. <laughs> well, I can still haunt you, Walter. You can count on that. So when did you know? Eh, little things. Becky's clothes started to smell like fresh pine. Very <laughs> dirt on the tires of her car. Seats the ferry in the glove box. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Joe, you're a regular dick. <laughs> I'm going to let that one go. <laughs> so what now? How do you plan to tell her? I don't. She has her secret, and now I have mine. You can't be serious. You owe me this much at least. I want to see what happens next. Oh, she plans to keep pulling this off. <laughs> but what about the kids? Nothing. We're not going to say a word to them. Got me? Dad, where's Mom? I need Mom to hear this too. She'll be back soon. Oh, we can't wait. We're on our way to buy something, something very important. Kenny's in the car, and, and her dad's in her living room. Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Blood. Sporty sweater. What, what well, are you? Uh, where do you know my son from? That's what's so weird and awesome. You know the girl I've been dating. Kenny, right? Right. Uh, well, Mr. Flood is her dad. What are you doing here? <laughs> they love each other. Isn't that awesome? You mean to tell me yeah. that she? This is her dad, and this is her dad. <laughs> I know Kenny. You do? How's that? I stood in your house. Oh, that's it's amazing. Right. But how do you two know each? other? Oh, we have someone in common, right, Walter? <laughs> <laughs> is that Andy? Let me get you a glass. So. <laughs> What's the big move? We <laughs> can't tell you until Mom gets here. But we're on our way to buy a ring! <laughs> <laughs> Say again? We're gonna be married, Daddy! Isn't that amazing? Yes, it is! <laughs> I can't wait to tell Rebecca! Oh, is that your dad's new lady friend? Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> We were just talking about her. Well, she's great. I'll definitely want her at the wedding. Oh, well, she'll be there. <laughs> Up to you. 
But for God's sakes, Walter, have a little fun with it. <laughs> Voicemail. Oh, well. Better leave a message. But Joe. Don't make me haunt you, Walter. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, uh, Rebecca. It's me, Walter, your lover. <laughs> Hello, this is your big hubby. <laughs> oh, how my sailboat misses you. <laughs> I just got finished working on some roofs. <laughs> Darling, I made some plans for us. You know, with my tools up on the... Roof? <laughs> I thought we'd climb in the copter and visit a few graves. <laughs> and now I'm home here. I'd like you to show me where they buried Joe. <laughs> here at home. I'd love to pay my respects to the old dead roofer. Wouldn't that be a team? How in the world did he do it? And hey, would you mind if I called you Becky? It has such a nice ring to it. I'm not doing this anymore. And speaking of rings, you'll never guess who Kenny is going to marry. We got cut You did pretty good, Walter. <laughs> Just kill me. I didn't know what to do, where to go, so I, I came here to, to my old office. Maybe, maybe I'd sleep under my desk. Maybe, maybe Walter Flood would walk in like he did that very first night. Good evening. I'm married and my husband is alive! Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> and I can realize that it had all just been a dream. That's when I saw it. It was, must have been delivered after hours. It was parked at the edge of the lot, gleaming in the moonlight. Mrs. Tipton's new car. And right beside it, a second one, an identical car. Well, there's been some mistake. They've sent two cars. I mean, that would explain the delay. I checked our inventory, our directory um, under inventory and delivery, and there was Mrs. Carr, uh, Mrs. Tipton's car, right there on the books. But as for this second car, this, this this identical car, that there was nothing. I called Mrs. Tipton, told her the good news. She asked, can I get the car right away, tonight? I didn't see why not, but she was on her way. I finished up the paperwork on Mrs. Tipton's car. Then I grabbed our universal key, I put it in my purse, and I went outside into the night to see the second car. It was luminous. I slipped into the driver's seat. It enveloped me like a cult. <laughs> I wrote down the VIN number of this, this second car, this phantom vehicle. Then I, I came back inside, and using the VIN number, I looked up the registered owner, Becky Foster. It was my bonus from Buckley. But I never got my new life. I got my new car. When Mrs. Tipton arrived, she took one look at her car and she said, May I go? May I finally just go? I said, <laughs> Sure. I came back inside to get her extra paperwork, her warrant, <coughs> and her extra key. That's when I heard it. That's when I heard that car, that car's engine roar to life. I, I raced to the door and I called across the lot for Mrs. Tipton to wait just one more minute. But, but she was gone. And her car was still there. She had taken the wrong car. She had driven away in mine with my purse on the seat next to her. Instinct took over. I jumped into her car. And I fired it up. Oh, wow, the sound of that thing, like the roar of a velvet tiger. Okay, now I was chasing her down the freeway. <laughs> I made the on-ramp shortly after she did. I had that black car in my sights, and it was like a shadow chasing its shadow. But, but that, that woman, I mean, I should have known. I, she had nothing to lose. Try 
quiet as I might, I just could not catch her. And about 10 miles out of town, I, I lost her for good. But I kept driving, putting the lights of the city in my wake. Every billboard I passed had the same two words at the bottom, Walter Flood, Walter Flood, Walter Flood, mile after mile. <laughs> my reasons for going back were as strong as ever. They were not as strong as, as this car, as this thing pulling me through the night, taking me miles away from my life. About two days later, in a motel room about 600 miles away from home, I turned on a television and found out what had happened to Mrs. Tipton. She had driven all the way to Deception Pass, to that bridge that spans those rugged waters. When she reached that bridge in the middle of the night, she floored it and was gone, safely, straight all the way across to the other side, to where that, that sharp turn goes right along the edge of the water, of the ocean, where apparently, Lord, it again, but she did not turn, and the guardrail did not stop her, and that car, that amazing machine, continued to roar as it soared through the air and fell, a sheer drop down, down, rugged waters below. The body was not found. The divers searched for several days found only the car registered in my name <laughs> and a purse containing several forms of identification, all mine. <laughs> the driver was presumed to be dead and to be me. I can't believe we're doing this so soon. It's what dad wanted. Okay. I'm Ginger. I I'm a friend of Walter's. Rebecca, uh, Becky, was just the. Yes? I was going to say she was the best thing that ever happened to Walter. I I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I understand. Thanks for being here. You know our friend Steve. Oh, hello. Steve worked with Becky at the uh, at the dealership. How you holding up, Joe? Oh, you know, you've been there. Yes, I have. We had candles at Rita's memorial too. Everyone has candles, Steve. <laughs> so you sell cars? I'm afraid I do. Used to until, you know, it, it all crumbled into dust. And your line of work is what? Pardon? Uh, sorry, it's just, it's just oh, small no, talk. I know that. I'm just, not really very good at it. To... I'm not good at making my talk small enough when I talk to people who are female. People, I'm not. I'm way out of practice. <laughs> Steve, yes. I would very much like to <coughs> ask what I do for a living. Okay. <clears throat> Well, I bartend. <laughs> really? Five nights a week and Saturday lunch. See. I'm uh, pretty good at it. Uh, uh, I was just headed to the kitchen. Were you now? I bought some pomegranate spritzer. <laughs> I brought some scotch. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. I'll never understand it. We wanted to see how far she would push it. Right. How far she'll go to pull it off. And now we know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Foster. Keep an eye on your old man, okay? He's taking this hard. Did you need anything, Dad? We should head to the restaurant there, holding a table for us. 
Will you tell the others? Sure. She's going to be okay, Chris. She's, uh, she's in a better place. you got to believe it. You hungry?
not my girlfriend anymore. Oh, no. She's my fiance. How weird and awesome is that, huh? <laughs> Mom. Chris, Chris, everyone, please, I just let me. You know, when it started, I didn't quite know what to make of it. And I, I didn't know why. But looking back on it now, oh, it's, it's so clear to me. I had hindsight bias. Very common. Uh, once an outcome is known, we think we could have foreseen it. It's total arrogance. Total hogwash. I agree. Amen to that. Are you boys finished? Becky, I for one am glad you're home. We're all glad, Ginger. Uh, uh, that's is, not what it sounds like. I was going to ask you to go hiking. <laughs> <laughs> I don't hike, Steve. I knew you'd say that. I knew that you weren't Rita. That you could never be Rita. That I could never go on that hike again. It's over. It's over, isn't it? worn a pair of nice Italian loafers, hand molded leather, artisan cured. No, but please keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> Get your coat. Becky, I want you to Steve know that. Steve Cole. Mr. Flood. I'm sorry. I wanted to do this right. You think you get outsmarted, don't you? <clears throat> Sir? Look at you. Love has made you impossibly stupid. I bet you still cry at songs on the radio. You, know, you probably have a favorite booth at your restaurant and a dessert you love to share. You still call each other in the middle of the day for no reason at all. Look at them. They're so fearless. It's, it's breathtaking. You really believe it, don't you? You really think you'll be the first two people in the history of the world to be loved to the punch, to get it before it gets you? Yes, sir. We do. Well then, Chris and Kenny, as your elder, it's my responsibility to let you go on believing the impossible, to not tell you otherwise. Don't oh, do it. Go kick Love's ass. While you're at it, give it another kick in the ribs for me. Of course I'll be at the wedding. Just don't make me shop for a gift. <laughs> Thank you, sir. The ring is ready. The jewelry still open for tonight. It's okay. Sure. Tomorrow's here too. We can wait a little. Sure. Whenever. There's nothing wrong. We're waiting a little. Like that. Like just step back a little. Mr. Flood, uh, it was meant to be the family, just in a different way. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> just us three. Should I get a deck of cards? No. Walter's starting to feel right at home here. Another beer, Joe? Sure, Walt. <laughs> We've had some real good talks. And Joe didn't kill me. That option is nearly completely off the table. <laughs> Listen, I, I don't know that I could ever explain to you, to either of you, you know, what I, what I felt, what I learned, what I... You're right, because we don't want to know. Thanks, Walt. And this is where we say goodbye. Oh, you have my car. Call me about your room. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Sure. All right. And as I stood there with my wife, I watched Walter Flood give Rebecca 
a final look, and then he walked out of our home. Wait a minute, what are you doing? Just telling them what happened. <laughs> You're not going to let me say goodbye to him? Wasn't planning on it. Okay. And then, as Walter turned to leave, Becky said to him, Walter, I want you to... But it was too late. <laughs> <laughs> he was gone. <laughs> Out the door and into the night. She never saw him again. Or did you? No. Becky got her old job back. She lost the raise and promotion, of course, but we offered to let her keep the car. Joe, we, we don't need that car. I mean, there's so many bad memories attached. And to which I said, are you crazy? Of course we're going to keep the car. And that was that. Life went on. Becky thought about maybe going back to school, massage therapy. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, hmm. not now, but do you think maybe sometime, someday you might forgive and forget? Probably not. <laughs> but it'll be okay. How? Why? I'm a roofer. I'll cover it. Just cover it over. <laughs> we started taking long drives together in that car. One day we even took that car up to Cedar Cove. From the road we saw divers trolling the waters near Walton's dock. They were searching for a wedding. <laughs> Other days we just drove. Radio on. Together. Traffic moving nice and... Nice and easy. Heaven. 